Welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Tim Scallon, registered dietitian. And I'm Manuel Marini, executive chef. So here we are, the holidays are upon us. It came so fast. It did. And I was talking to Santa on the phone the other night and was talking to him about daughter Claire. And as I'm talking, he says, whoa, ho, ho, I just realized which Tim you are. You know how Santa talks. Yeah, exactly. You do a good job. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Maybe it could be a retirement job for <laughs> yeah. me, you think? And I've you got know, the beard. You got the beard, yeah. yeah. just need to grow it out a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Well, so a little chubby. Yeah, I yeah, need to gain some weight. Uh, not eating this healthy food, perhaps. Uh, okay. Well, so anyway, so I'm talking to him about daughter Claire, and he says, uh, uh, so how is uh, Chef Manny doing? And I said, oh, Chef Manny's doing great. And he... What did he say? Well, he said, uh, he said, you know, that Manny has been a very good boy. Oh, I hope so, yeah. But... But... There was a but in there. Can oh, you come believe on, this? Come yes. On. Okay, and so I'm listening to Santa, and as I'm listening on the phone, but, but what, but what? Uh, he used too much salt in a recipe. No, he overcooked the chicken. I'm going through everything you could have done that Santa would have remembered. And so I'm listening on the phone, and it was so quiet you could hear a snowflake drop. And Santa continued, but he still hasn't sent his letter to me yet. <sighs> Chef Manny, you haven't got your letter to Santa yet? Well, I did. I've been sending it, but I haven't got my Ferrari yet. Okay, well, Chef Manny, you know, this time of year... It could happen really this start... year, though, right? Well, it could. And, and you know, maybe you overcooked the chicken too much. Well, you know... I don't believe that. I don't think so. I have never known you to overcook the chicken. I just want the, the nice... Chicken. That little Ferrari would be nice, wouldn't it? Well, get your letter into Santa. I will. All right, so uh, this time of year, you know, there's plenty of recipes that don't meet healthy guidelines out there. And Chef Manny has <clears throat> for you all uh, some recipes well, that do meet guidelines. Well, we're heading into the uh, holiday season, parties, yeah. you know, but you want to really take care of yourself while you're having fun and enjoying your yeah. company of your friends and family and whatnot. It's all about balance. It's all it? about balance. So I thought that let's do a couple of just the ideas. Okay. Some traditional, some just new ideas that you and I put together. Like some appetizers. Yeah, something so, to pass around. People can just get, but every time they take a bite, it's not as salty or yes. fatty or, you know, all that good stuff. But so it, we're going to do it a it, different way. And it's still full of flavor. Of, lots of flavor. That's what's exciting about Memorial Cooking Innovations. You can have the flavor and the health, too. Yeah, definitely. So anyway, one of the things is we're going to do a stuffed mushrooms. We're going to add a little bit of spinach, tomatoes, onions, a little olive oil, garlic, a little feta cheese, a little okay. mozzarella, and a, a little, little parmesan. Okay. A very little feta. It brings out good flavor. <laughs> it does. But it, it has does. a lot of sodium. Okay. So we're going to kind of alternate that. All right. Then we're going to bake them in the oven. And then mm. after that, we're going to do our mini cordon bleu medallions Whoa. that you can, you can actually slice and pass them around and people will enjoy. And these are healthy? These are healthy. Okay. Trust okay. me, because you broke them down. Yep. You made sure they're very healthy. I did the analysis. And then we're going to do a nice beef roulade. And then we're going to top it. We're going to stuff it with some boiled eggs, spinach, and carrots. And then after that, uh, we'll make a chimichurri sauce. And that could be e eaten either hot or cold. How do okay. you think? Okay. Ooh, that's wonderful. Okay. So what are we going to do first? So first, we're going to do, I got, we're going to do the uh, stuffed mushrooms, okay? Okay. I got my pan hot right here. All right. So I got a little bit of onions. All I right. already diced some onions, okay? Good, good. I'm going to add a little bit of onions here. A little tomatoes. You know, as we were putting this recipe together, the, uh, uh, in this recipe, it's a perfect example of how you modify a recipe uh, to make it more healthy. In this particular recipe, there are four ingredients that are high sodium. There are three cheeses, and then there's a, a pinch of salt. Okay, even that pinch of salt, we have to count as high we sodium. We have to, yes. But we're going to modify these cheeses so that there's room for that pinch of salt. All right. Here I got me some nice large button mushrooms. Yeah. We're just going to take the bottoms oh. off. And it, we're going to use these bottoms, all right? We're going to throw them in now see, or mix. The way you're doing that, I would have cut that off. But the way you're doing it, it I'm creates just a nice them. little uh, Pocket. cup. Yes. Okay. Okay? okay. Just like that. All right. So okay. I'm going to grab the bottom of the mushrooms, yeah. and we're going to dice them up. So you'll use everything. I'm going to use good. everything. So in this recipe, if you've got uh, three kinds of cheese, in order to modify this recipe, which of these cheeses have the most sodium? That's the one that you want to use the Very least little. amount of. And then which of these cheeses has the least sodium? And that's the one you want to use the most of. So, so we, we're using actually three. Yeah. Now that I have 
my tomatoes, my little mushrooms. I'm gonna add my spinach, okay? Ooh, spinach only takes very, it cooks very quick. And you didn't dice that up like you did the other no. ingredients. No, no, this is, this is something that once it cooks, it'll, it'll, cook it, it'll shrink down, yeah, okay. so that's what we want, okay? Well, you know, as we were looking at uh, the sodium content of these cheeses, <clears throat> in two tablespoons of feta, there are 206 milligrams of sodium. In two tablespoons of the other two cheeses, the Parmesan and the mozzarella, there are 76 milligrams and 75 milligrams. Wow. So the feta is the highest sodium, so we're just going to use the two tablespoons of that. And that's good. And you know why? Because feta has a nice, nice flavor. Strong, strong flavor. flavor. Yeah. So, so really, you don't need much. Yeah, yeah. That is beautiful. Okay. okay. Now we're going to put this to the side there, Tim. We're okay. just going to let it cool down a little bit. I'm going to tell yep. you why. Yep. Okay, on this pan right here, let me get my other pan. Okay. I'm going to get another uh, saute pan. I'm just going to um, light, lightly okay. drizzle on my, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a mushroom and just spread it out, oh, okay? Okay, and you don't want your pan too hot when you do that. I don't. Because well, I'm not actually, we're going to bake these. Okay, okay. All right, I just want to make sure that they don't stick. So we're going to get all four. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Now, we have this. It, it is a little hotter than normal. Yep. But I want to stuff these. So okay. here's what we're going to do. Okay. We want them to cool down. You could always pull them out, put them in your refrigerator, lay it out flat, put it in your fridge, cool them down as much as you can. Okay. But for the show, we're just going to go ahead and add our mozzarella. Just a little. Okay. We're going to add our feta right here, yep. and very little feta. Yeah. And usually when you buy feta, they yep. come in big it's chunks. It's crumbly. Yeah. So you're going to just fall, mix it, uh, pinch it, and it'll fall apart. Of course, you're not doing the whole recipe on this show. You're just kind of showing us. Showing how them how we did this. ours. Yeah. yeah. And this is something fun to do. Just a little parmesan. A little parmesan. Okay. Now we're gonna mix and we're gonna stuff our mushrooms. Okay. And then we're gonna bake them off. All right. So this this idea of modifying a recipe to make it more healthy, uh, you could the same concept applies to fat ingredients. You see us, for example, if the recipe calls for uh, heavy cream or whipping cream, you see us using a fat-free. Uh, half and half. Yes, try uh, to get it the healthier the better. And so what you're doing there is you're you're choosing those ingredients that have something in them that you want to limit, whether it be sodium or fat, and then you either modify those ingredients using less of them or you find a reasonable uh, substitute for them, something that still makes the recipe work. And so really anybody can make recipes more healthy. That's true. So you want to now, go in the oven with that? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and right here. We'll just throw it in the oven okay. at about 325 for about 15, 20 minutes, okay? Okay. Okay, Chef Manny, what's next? Okay. So how about the chicken cordon bleu? All right. Traditional, yep. traditional cordon bleu stuffed uh, chicken with ham yeah. and Swiss cheese, Okay. you know? All right. And then there's two ways of doing it. One is uh, egg wash, flour, and then sauteing it. The other one would be breadcrumbs. Okay. And okay. deep fried. So, but the way we're going to do, we're going to saute ours. Yeah. But we're going to stuff it with a low sodium ham, yeah. a low sodium Swiss, which is yeah. American Swiss, and we can still enjoy the natural, good, traditional flavor. And when you see this recipe, you'll see how we've, we've also kind of limited the amount of Swiss cheese. Instead of using as much as you would in a traditional recipe, we're using just enough to retain the, the traditional recipe, but still fit our healthy guidelines. Good. So, so here, and then, you know, you can go to the grocery store. They do have a low sodium, but mm -hmm. don't let that fool you. It's not really that low, but still it's a high. lot. But it's still high, but it's a little lower than just your regular deli ham and whatnot. Yep, so. yep. It's, it's like that, uh, we've, you know, we've used in the past other very high sodium ingredients before. Uh, soy sauce is a good example, and there is a low sodium soy sauce, but it's still very high still. When it's and, and what we're going to do with this is because it is a low sodium ham, that's probably all the sodium we should be really taking. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to add any more sodium to don't, it. Don't so need any salt Don't need it this. because it has, it has all the flavors. Okay. So what I want to do here is I got my Swiss cheese. Okay. And then I got my deli slice. And make sure it's real paper thin. Yep. And then, and then yep. you know what? Usually in the in the deli stores at the groceries, they'll eat, slice it for mm -hmm. you. Just tell them you want it as thin as they can. Mm -hmm. You enjoy it more that way. Yep. So I'm going to put a couple of slices there, okay, Tim? Okay. Okay, so you're going to take this uh, ham and cheese, and you're going to stuff it inside a chicken breast. And uh, Let's talk about chicken breast. Okay. When we go to the grocery store, yep. you look at yep. chicken breast, there's two types of chicken breast. One is a single breast, the other one's a double breast. Yep. 
So if you're looking at a six ounce chicken breast, that's what the recipe calls for, mm -hmm. or four ounce chicken breast. There's two ways of looking at it. If it's a single breast, just like this, it's this like is a this. single breast. Yeah, right. and, and that's what, you know, common people call a chicken breast. But, of course, if you were looking at the whole chicken, it, that would be a half of a chicken breast. And I think that's where you're going with this. On exactly. our recipe, we say half a chicken breast, but this is what we're talking this about. This is what we're talking yeah. about, uh-huh. Yeah. So um, here's what I'm going to do. This is, to me, this is the inside of the breast. Okay. This is the outside, right okay. about here. So what I like to before, do... Before you do that, uh, you know, as a dietitian, I keep looking at that one piece of fat right there. And you can trim you know, that off. Yeah, okay. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, when there's a dietitian in the kitchen. Yeah, and what you do is you slowly, what, you, what we want to do oh. is we want to do a nice butterfly. Yeah. And it's almost like an, a double breast. Okay. All right? Yeah. So, okay. ta-da. It's That's done. That's easy. Okay, I'm going to put this right here. Okay. All right, so we got our breast right here, Tim. Yep. I have my ham, I have my chicken. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and what I do is I like to roll it and roll it as tight as you can because once it hits the heat on that chicken, I yep. mean on the cheese, it will melt. Yep. But you want to try to keep it as much as you can. And what I like to do here is I like to start. Now the recipe does call for a, um, a oh thank you, a little basil. Mm -hmm. All right, a little basil. So we got some fresh basil here. Yep. Let me take a couple of these. And we wanted to add a little color to it. This is what the version that we're doing on, on it, just to give it some little flavor and color. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We want to do a couple of julienne red bell peppers. Because this isn't just a, I mean, you could eat this as a cordon bleu entree, but we're, this is actually going to be an hors d'oeuvre. An hors d'oeuvre, so yeah. we're going to pass it around. And then mm -hmm. we'll, you'll see later when we get it finished, cooked off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll it. Okay. Nice and pretty, just yeah. like that. Okay. All right. So, let me get this out of the way. You want a little oil in here? Yeah, just a little, just a little bit, okay? Okay, just a little, okay. Okay. It's hot. It's hot, so be careful. So, you just want to, all we want to do is we're just going to sear the chicken mm -hmm. and then finish it off in the oven, too. And, and you, could, you could spray some uh, cooking spray in you there could if do you that. wanted to. So, what I like to do is, again, be careful. Yeah. We're just going to sear it little by little. And when you're searing this, you're cooking the outer layer, which seals in some flavor. Technically, I guess that's what searing would mean, huh? Yes, just searing means it's, it just seals the flavor inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, here I have a little bit of 17 seasoning, which is that Miss Dash, that, oh, you know, okay. that favorite. It's, and just a, it's just a low sodium seasoning. Low sodium seasoning. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit. This is just me. If it's, you have your favorite seasoning like Italian or, mm -hmm. or just mm -hmm. parsley or something just to make it look real nice. So even Italian herb you could Very nice. It smells really good. Yeah. So That's we're going to go ahead good. and throw it with the mushrooms. Okay. All right. Beautiful. We'll just put it in there for a little bit while the mushrooms are cooking so is the chicken. That so, was easy, wasn't it? Indeed. You know, you could you could throw this together just even as your guests are uh, uh, driving up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Beautiful. So when you're making choices about that next thing that you want to bring to your party this holiday season, remember that pre-made hors d'oeuvres are always going to be higher in sodium and more expensive than ones you would make from scratch. So it's great that you're showing us how to do some delicious... And, you know, there is some good stuff that's pre-made and stuff yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. But the people will enjoy it when they know that you made it. That's right. That's you right. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. And this is a lot less expensive yeah. than the pre-made. And it's fun. One. Okay, so what's the next one? Okay, now we're going to do the roulade. Ooh. So that'll be fun. So what we're going to end up doing on this one, you could use... You asked me when we wrote the recipe, can I use... Uh, what was uh, it? Skirt meat? Yeah, yeah. Inside or outside? Well, you know? when, when you said, when we were talking about this and you said you wanted to use flank steak, I thought that meant fajita meat. But you told me, no, that's not exactly no, the No, it's same a different thing. cut. Yeah. But you can use fajita meat too. Okay. You know, All right. you can. So, I mean, you. So pick what's on sale. What's on sale? What's yeah. good? Because yeah. the trick that we're going to do, I'm going to get this hot in a minute, but I'm going to pull this so we can get the camera here, if you okay. don't mind. Yep. It's hot, so be careful, okay, okay Tim? Okay. I got my red board here. So I got a nice piece of flank steak. Okay. All right. So, and this, you know, flank steak, it's, it's, a, it's a good, nice piece of meat. Yeah. It's, it's always on sale it, here and there. So it's, it's less expensive than less something. Less expensive, easy to trim because yep. there's not that much fat in it. Okay. And you could always come back and trim the fat. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, 
how we how we what we did with the cordon bleu we butterflied it yes we're going to do the same thing with this same technique okay. same technique I'm now now on this flat. okay go ahead go ahead okay i'm gonna lay flat and i, I just guide myself just be careful be very yeah. very careful You're when you do things feeling as you go you know i was uh, we had a viewer who said that they uh they wanted to make that uh, stuffed pork loin that that you did back in october and so they uh they had the recipe and they went to memorialhealth.org and got uh you up on the laptop in the kitchen as they were doing the pork and i thought yeah that's a great idea that is a great idea isn't yeah, it? yeah yeah there you go okay so you've got him butterflied i got him butterflied cut that little piece of fat off right there you just know like these, the chicken you, you just know know keep how these an eye on that are yeah you always watch but you those. need a little bit for flavor too well you that's know, right helps. Yeah, yeah there's there's a little bit in there okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are something else but okay. okay so the recipe calls for something simple spinach yep. good for you very good for you okay so what we're going to do is we're going to lay the spinach right on wash it really good yep and lay it right on the beef. So you're just kind of making a layer of spinach on this butterfly. That's it. Okay. All right. Okay. Now it calls for uh, some carrots. Now I got some nice peeled carrot here. Mm -hmm. Now um, two things that you can do: you can boil the carrot first, and then maybe cut uh, matchsticks out of them, or, mm -hmm. or or you can do two. Another one is that. That's what your recipe says. It's just to blanch them off a little bit lightly. Yeah. You know, yeah. lightly. You still want some texture. You do. So here's what I do. First of all, cut the carrot in half. All right, that way you have a secure, it doesn't roll around. Yep. Then you can cut some thin strips. Okay. Because it's also going to cook with the beef. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I got that. Let me get my knife out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the spinach, the, um, the carrots right above the spinach. I would have never guessed you were going to do this. Okay. All right. All I'm right. with you. You're with me? Mm-hmm. Now the recipe calls for some boiled eggs. Now this is the part that I was having trouble visualizing. When we were talking about this recipe and you told me you wanted, you said you wanted to roll up the beef around the boiled eggs and I, I, I have trouble visualizing this. Okay. okay, just show me what we're talking about here. Okay, so we're going to lay the boiled eggs right on this side, just okay. like that. I was thinking he's going to do what? Okay. And now. And then what? Now we're just going to go ahead. So and you're gonna, roll this. You're literally going to roll that up into, and this is <clears throat> this is a roulade. Uh -huh. You know, we, we, we called it a roulade because, you know, roulade means to roll, roll in French. Okay, Tim, you see this? Yeah. Okay, here's the deal. We could do two things. How are we, how we going to keep it together? Okay. We can put some toothpicks over this okay. or maybe use some butcher string. Okay. And just Close wrap pins. it around. Close pin. Okay. Close pin. <laughs> Staple, staple. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, once you do that, then you, I'm going to roll this one over so it looks very nice. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, if you don't mind, put it in yep. it right there real yep. quick. Yeah, this pan's a little hot. So be careful. Okay. I got a little bit of oil. I'm okay. going to put a little bit more. Just It'll get hot real quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to sear it. Once okay. we sear it, just like we did the chicken, we're going to sear it really good. Finish it in the oven. Okay. okay. All right. Now, this would be an example of uh, something that once you get it out of the oven, you want to reach an internal temperature of about 165. And that's pretty okay. easy to do so because we thinned out the beef, we mm -hmm. got it stuffed in there. You want to make sure, always check the center of the thickest piece. Okay. All it's right. not about checking the ends. Oh, it, it feels hot. So it's about checking the center, the, the thickest piece of the meat. Okay. And I have a viewer question. Someone asked me, that uh, if if they were roasting a turkey this holiday, uh, and uh, you know their recipe, okay, I'm trying to remember what they said. Their recipe calls for cooking this 22 pound turkey uh, five hours uh, and at 325. And so here's the question. The question is, so if they wanted to put the turkey on, you know, they're going to get up at five in the morning to to uh, start the turkey, but they didn't want to have to do the uh, preheat the oven. So the question was, uh, how long should they allow for uh, not preheating the oven? In other words, if you're putting your turkey in. And well, you know, um, that's a good question because it's turkey time, you know. Yeah. And a lot of people like to eat turkey at lunchtime. You know, the family's coming over. Let me throw this in the oven if okay. you don't mind, Tim, okay. real quick. Sure. So we can get it ready. Yeah. Beautiful. Good. 
give yourself at least 30 to 45 minutes extra only okay. because that's how long it takes for the oven to really reach that temperature to heat up okay. you know regular convention oven gas oven yeah. electric ovens yeah you know give yourself at least 30 to 45 minutes okay. so if your if your turkey's recommended temperature or time was five hours yeah give yourself five and a half hours okay. but always yeah. check your, You're your still going by that internal temp. Inter temp. Okay. And what's the internal temp? And, uh, well, for turkey would be 165 or 175. Exactly. And your turkey actually might say 175. And right. then on the turkey, any bird, yep. when you're using bones, yep. check the dark meat. Yep. And try to hit it right by the joint. Because yeah, that's the bloodiest part and that's the one the that really part. the thickest part. Yep. So always check the hip, the... the yep. The knee part of the turkey. So. so a kitchen thermometer, a meat thermometer is an essential kitchen tool. It's a must have. Yeah. Okay. Even your refrigerator thermometer is a must have. Yeah. Only because I want to make sure, you know how many times you open and close refrigerators. Sometimes yep. if you got little ones, they, they always grab something yep. and they don't, they're not sure if they shut it or yep. close tight. So it's always good to know that you always have, uh, it's nice and cold inside. Okay. Okay. We got the beef. We got the chicken. Got the, okay. Got the, uh, now we're going to make the chimichurri. Ooh, okay. Okay, and chimichurri is basic, simple, simple herb. And then here's what the ingredients are: basil. Okay. My favorite. I have uh, parsley. Okay. So here I got some basil. Okay. Now what we're gonna do with this basil is we're just gonna take the leaves. Okay. You could also use the stems, which we are gonna use some of them. Okay. Now you know when you said chimichurri, I didn't really know what that was, and so tell us where chimichurri comes from. Chimichurri is very popular in Latin America, especially okay. in the south. Okay. Tip so, of Uruguay, Chile, okay. Argentina, especially Brazil. Brazil. Okay. Um, you know, it's just a popular. It's you know, like, here they use barbecue sauce. Yes. In Latin America, they use any grilled items such as chicken, pork, beef. Yep. When you're out in the grill, you use this sauce and gives it a lot of flavor to okay. it. Okay. So you've got basil. Mm -hmm. I got some basil here. I'm going to get the parsley. If you don't mind, Tim, I'm yeah. going to give you this. Yeah. You, you can do, do that while okay. I go get the parsley. Okay. All right. So you just want the big leaves in here. You know, my basil is growing very good. It, it, uh, it made it through the winter last year, so I'm hoping it's going to make it through the winter this Mine year. Mine is doing really good. Yeah. You know, you taught me that uh, you can take this basil and literally... Uh, and that's what I do. It'll, when we, it'll root. From it'll root the, these. Yeah. These right here, we just replant them. Okay. You want that one in there? Oh, yeah. All Throw right. it in there. It doesn't okay. hurt. I got a little parsley. Again, everything goes in there. All right. Now, in order for us to make this work, we need some type of liquid, right? Yep. Yep. Recipe calls for some red wine Red wine vinegar. vinegar. Okay. All right. So, just pour okay. some red wine vinegar. It's going to help us chop it up. And we don't want to puree it, but we want to chop it. Okay. And this is... So, if you didn't have this little... Chop it by hand. So, just, yeah. just chop it fine like just we've seen it, you do before. Just chop it. Put it in a mixing bowl. Yeah. yeah. And I thought this was this was a nice little gadget yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So, but I like to also do it by hand. Okay. So. All right, and then you're going to add a little some bit of oil. olive oil. Yeah, and extra virgin is going to give you more flavor. More flavor to it. You can use the light if you want. Uh, you know, the light and the extra virgin is the same number of calories. People think that light means it's lower in calories. Not true. Not true. Uh, it's just lighter on the flavor. That's right. That's right. Okay. It's garlic. Garlic. Yeah. We'll put a tablespoon. You know, this can't one help but taste good. Right, and then we're gonna add a little crushed red pepper. Okay, just for a little zip. For a little zip. Okay, we're just gonna add a little bit. Okay. Now, if it gets a little too hot, add a little more vinegar, add a little more oil, mix it, it, let spicy. it sit. Yeah. Okay, okay. So now we're gonna close this. And if you don't mind. You want me to hit that yeah. a couple of times? Yeah. Okay. This Flip way. it. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Okay. You know, if a dietitian can do this, anybody can. We're doing a good job. Look good? Yeah. Okay. We're just going to let it sit on the side. Let me okay. See. So this is like a South American barbecue sauce, you might say. Yeah. You could use this as a marinade, yeah, huh? Yeah, it smells good. Mm. Basically, this is a uh, vinaigrette with parsley and basil, huh? Parsley and basil. Okay. Tastes okay. a little bit of it, Tim. Okay. You could always add a little pinch of salt, pepper, maybe. If it's a little strong, it has a taste. Good? It's delicious. Okay, so we're going to let fresh. it sit. It's fresh. Mm -hmm. We're going to let it sit for a minute. Right When we get ready to set our plates up, then we'll yeah. spin it one more time on that thing, and we're set to go. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so this all came out of the oven. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Let me get the plate. Okay. So, 
So at this point, I mean, you could serve this as a as an entree, or you could cut this up and serve it as hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres, and and our our uh, thing today was hors d'oeuvres. So yeah, let me try. Let me get this. Here's this right here, nice and hot. I got remember we got the little parmesan. It has a lot. We can always add a little more on top. Yeah. Finish it out. Oh, they're so tender. I'm gonna put them right here, Tim. Okay. And these. Trust me, they go well because when we did this yeah, these are... the other day, uh, when we did our sample, everybody wanted them. Yes, yes. So that was good. Now the chicken cordon bleu, if you don't mind, Tim, I'm gonna, this is still hot, so I'm going to okay. put it right here. Okay. I'm going to grab the chicken. I just turned over the, let me get my slicer here. So during the holidays, we want to bring back balance. Uh, you know, it's okay to have a, uh, a small serving of that eggnog. It's very high calorie. It's high in cholesterol, saturated fat. But it's part of the season. You know, let's have a little bit of that and then balance it with something like one of these mushrooms, which is very dense in nutrients. It's not high in fat. Uh, uh, choose some vegetables this holiday. And, of course, another idea about balance is getting the family up and moving around in order to uh, burn some of the extra calories we're all going to consume during this season. You know, uh, uh, and you have to work that into your routine. Like, for example, your, uh, uh, get everyone to go on a nature walk. That's just beautiful, isn't it? Uh, or, uh, you know, get everybody up on the Wii game. You know, this, this holiday, Chef Manny may be skiing downhill on the Wii game. Huh, I'll Chef tell Manny? you what. Avalini over here got her Wii for her birthday, yeah. and that's all we're doing in the afternoon, which is fun. It is, yeah. It's fun only because it, it gets you going. You it's, bet it does. That's a good source of exercise these days, and it's a family thing. You know, the holidays yeah. are not really... So what do you really, think, huh? That you got is the beautiful. carrots, the eggs, the spinach on the outside. You know, I was having trouble seeing this, but now I understand how what you were doing there. You know, you were telling me uh, when we were talking about this recipe that... In, in another version of this recipe, you would use a pickle in there. Of course, we took out the pickle because it was too high in sodium. And see, these are such a pretty kind of hors d'oeuvres. You can always make these little ones, beautiful. cut them in half, and then spread it. Now, the chimichurri sauce. Let's blend it one more time so okay. it'll mix, if you don't mind, Tim. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Again, this goes good with beef, chicken, anything you like. Okay. All right, so we're going to do it on the uh, beef lot here. So we've learned in this show that, <clears throat> that the holidays are really all about balance. You know, getting the family together, balancing uh, good food with some exercise. You know, we can modify recipes. We no, choose okay. that high sodium ingredient and, and use smaller amounts of that. Uh, we add flavor to recipes by adding... Uh, Things like, for example, low sodium broth to, uh, to foods. And pre-made foods, such as hors d'oeuvres, are much higher in sodium and they're more expensive than things that you can make at home. And have fun with it. Yeah, yeah. And so with that, we'd like to thank our sponsor, uh, Brookshire Brothers, a celebration of family and, and uh, sorry, of food and community. And we'd like to thank uh, Sodexo for helping to bring Memorial Cooking Innovations to you. Uh, we'd also like to thank the city of Lufkin for filming and distributing Memorial Cooking Innovations. And, and we want to say uh, a special hello to our viewers up in Minnesota. We appreciate y'all being here with us today. And uh, a special thanks to each of you because with you, we are changing the world one bite at a time. time. See you next time. <laughs>